Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening um, on the Overland and Vista intersection study. Uh, my name is Christy Inselman, and I'm a senior planner um, with Planning and Projects Department of ACHD. Also on the call with us are representatives from our partner agencies, uh, the City of Boise, as well as other key ACHD staff. Um, and we thank everyone for attending. You can go to the next slide, please. Uh, also on the call with us is Tim Nicholson with Kim Lee Horn. Uh, Kim Lee Horn is a consulting firm responsible for developing the concept study concept studies for the Overland and Vista intersection um, that you will see tonight. Okay, next. The goal of the concept study is to enhance the intersection for those that walk, bike, and drive. Um, the intersection currently contains a, we call it a free-ish running right. Uh, we call it a free-ish running right because there's no receiving lane on Overland Road that you would typically see with a free running right, uh, which has caused some safety concerns um, and accidents with cars attempting to merge and yield in that location. And because there are residential homes all along the lane, it has made it difficult for them to enter and leave their homes. Um, there's also a bus stop located within the island. And there are several schools and parks in the area that utilize this intersection. Okay, next. I guess I should I just pull that one up as I was talking. We did um, conduct a public outreach efforts. That's the free-ish running right that she's um, showing you there. Um, there's the icon there where the bus is located within that island. It's a landscaped island. Um, and then that, in, that whole corner has residential driveways directly onto Vista and to, onto Overland Road. Okay, next. So we conducted a public out or conducted public outreach efforts um, to hear from the surrounding neighbors and users of the intersection what concerns they have with that intersection as what well, as well as what improvements that they would like to see. The outreach took place in spring of this year. Next. For the public outreach, we held individual stakeholder meetings between March 15th through the 31st, where we met with property owners, business owners, school districts, um, school principals, as well as neighborhood groups. We conducted an online survey between March 22nd and April 5th. During the public outreach, we received a total of 219 comments, which was wonderful. Um, and we were really gl glad to see that 82% of the respondents were those that lived in the neighborhood. The majority of the respondents, 60%, um, agreed that in improvements were needed for those that walk um, and bike, with 40% agreeing that improvements are needed for those that drive. The results of the survey revealed that the majority of the concerns from the respondents were safety for all users. Next. Those that responded to the survey, the vast majority, 90%, as you can see, were those that live in the surrounding um, neighborhood. 99% responded that they use motorized vehicles when traveling through the intersection, which is a high percentage, and 38% responded that they bike or walk through that intersection. Next. Um, with regard to safety improvements in the intersection, 60% 60, 60 responded um, that they are, they, safety improvements are needed for those that walk and bike. 42 responded that improvements are needed for those that drive, um, which was the majority of those that responded. And 64% responded that the survey was the most, safety was the most important consideration for this intersection. So in summary, the respondents identified that the intersection needs improvements to the bike and ped facilities and that the free, free-ish running right lane should be replaced with a traditional right turn lane. And the bus stop should be reloc relocated to the south side of the intersection. I will now turn it over to Tim Nicholson with Kim Lee Horn to go through the concepts that were developed um, as a result of the outreach efforts. Thank you, Christy. Uh, thank you everyone for attending tonight. My name is Tim Nicholson. I am with Kim Lee Horn. We're a local civil engineering firm here in the Boise area and uh, happy to be a part of ACHD's team to take a look at this intersection and see how we can help make this a little safer and better uh, for all modes of transportation uh, here at Vista and Overland. <clears throat> This first concept that you can see here tonight is the existing conditions for the intersection. 
Uh, you'll see the existing bus stop on the northwest corner, uh, and as long as well as uh, the existing parcels um, adjacent to the free running right, uh, of which three um, have driveways that uh, connect adjacent to the uh, to the free running right and take access uh, off of that free running right. It's it's kind of an unusual situation. Uh, on, on most of the areas um, here in Ada County. You don't see this very often. It's <clears throat> quite unusual. Uh, as the consultant, uh, we, we were charged with coming up with some ideas uh, to, to make this safer and better based on the feedback that we got during the public involvement period uh, earlier this spring. So uh, that kind of takes us to our the first concept that we've developed. Uh, here you'll see uh, what we, when we did the analysis, uh, the traffic analysis, it, it showed that we needed a dedicated right turn lane uh, for southbound Vista turning on to westbound Overland. So we've added that lane uh, and what it does, it, it closes off the, the free running right that was existing. Uh, so in order to do that, we needed to come up with access for the adjacent homeowners um, so they can get to their properties. So this concept has the, the more northernmost property there that's impacted uh, with its own independent driveway uh, off of Vista. The other three properties to the south will take access off of Overland, uh, two of which are sharing uh, an access as you can see. The nice part about this concept is it still retains the landscaping island that's maintained by the city of Boise. Uh, it, it also relocates the bus stop <clears throat> from the northwest corner to the southwest corner across the street from another bus stop and adjacent to the Albertsons. Uh, this will help uh, with traffic flow. Uh, if, if anybody's driven south through that intersection, got caught behind the bus before, uh, you know that it's uh, it takes up one of the lanes, uh, preventing cars from from going southbound and uh, potentially westbound because cars could queue up um, behind the bus, blocking the free running right. Uh, we did hear about this being a concern from from motorists uh, when when we interviewed them. Uh, we also heard some concerns that it does back up significantly here, uh, especially in the PM uh, peak hour. Uh, causing some cut through traffic through through the neighborhood as well. So uh, this option also increases the sidewalk adjacent to Vista and Overland to a 10 foot wide sidewalk. Currently the existing sidewalks out there are five feet and ACHD is moving towards uh, increasing the sidewalk width to promote more bicycle friendly and pedestrian friendly modes of transportation uh, at, as they move through uh, arterial um, projects, arterial roadway improvement projects. It, this, this concept also uh, improves all the pedestrian ramps on all four corners uh, as part of this concept and project. These will all be upgraded to meet current ADA standards I think right now, currently, the uh, they're single directional ped ramps, so it, it kind of pushes pushes um, pedestrians out into the the middle of the intersection. Uh, this will have dual direction ped ramps and and direct them more perpendicular to the road and and across the street to the receiving ramps. Next slide, please. <clears throat> concept two is fairly similar to concept one, however, you'll see that the northernmost uh, resident that has access now off of the Overland side. And we've created a turnaround in this area for delivery vehicles and, and, um, and people that may uh, get in here inadvertently to be able to turn around and, and not impact the property owners. Um, again, this uh, keeps the landscape island slightly smaller uh, or a little, little different shape but it, it keeps that landscaping island. It again increases the sidewalk to 10 feet uh, adjacent to the project. Again, it also relocates the bus stop from the northwest corner to the southwest corner. 
and and it, like I said, it kind of focuses all of the um, all of the access off of the one single point off of Overland for all three main residents that are impacted by this free running right condition. Uh, again, it, it keeps the uh, dedicated right turn lane on Vista southbound to Overland westbound as uh, as warranted by the traffic analysis. With that, I'll turn it back over to Christy uh, to let you know a little bit more about, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got one more slide, I think. Next slide, please. Uh, so I, I'll touch a little bit on the benefits. Um, we talked a little bit about these already, but the relocation of that uh, existing southbound to westbound right turn uh, enhances vehicle and pedestrian safety. Uh, we heard a lot of um, a lot of comments from the residents and and some of the motorists that go through there about a lot of close calls with uh, peds, with bikes, with rear end collisions uh, in that right turn lane. Uh, again, like Christy mentioned earlier, there's no receiving lane on Overland westbound to um, facilitate that free running right. So cars have to stop and or yield there uh, and, and it can cause potential rear end collisions. Uh, obviously it provides much safer ingress and egress for the residents there. They're not backing out of their driveways uh, to be able to, to access uh, Overland and or Vista. Uh, it, it buffers the homes from pedestrian activity we did hear some concerns from the neighbors about this. Uh, so keeping, keeping the, uh, the sidewalk out closer to the intersection and in increasing uh, some landscaping there and buffering it with the, the access road helps, uh, helps with that concern. Uh, benefit again is uh, retaining the landscaping area for, for the trees and, and uh, surrounding neighborhood there for a little bit more beautification and like we also talked a little bit about the shifts the bus stop improving um, better traffic flow and now i believe i'll be turning it back over to christy Christy, it always muted. helps when you unmute yourself. <laughs> unmute button. Um, thanks, Tim. Um, so yeah, so the next steps in this process is we would love to hear your feedback um, on the concepts that you were presented this evening. Um, there is a survey. Um, you see a link there on our um, on the PowerPoint presentation. We also will have the same link on ACHG's website to go in, we would like comments do, um, back by July 1st. You can also utilize the QR, QR code on your screen um, to take that picture and go directly to that survey. You can also request um, written comments that you can submit directly to me um, here at ACHD, um, or you can call and have a conversation with me as well. I'm more than happy to do that, uh, or send me an email through the project's email. So there are a lot of ways that you can contact us and you can provide your feedback um, on the concepts that you've been presented um, tonight. So the next steps will be um, once we receive all of the feedback after the comment period has ended, um, our um, ACHD and our consultant will review and analyze that feedback and determine which concept is the most viable option to proceed with um, for a future project, um, a construction project in that area. And we will present, staff will present um, those final concepts to the ACHD commission for potential adoption. And we're um, targeting either late summer, early fall for that adoption. So we're looking August, September timeframe is when we would take that back to the ACHC commission. And when we take that back to the ACHC commission for adoption, that's also another opportunity for you to review those concepts and provide um, public feedback because it is a public hearing. Um, and that will be on one of our night meetings coming up. So it'll be around the same time that you're coming to this presentation this evening. Okay. Thank you. Well, just a reminder to everyone that's joining us this evening, we have already received one question, which we'll answer here in just a moment. But if you're interested in verbally speaking, you're welcome to raise your hand and we will allow you to speak. Or you can use the Q&A button 
and ask your question in writing and we'll, we'll work on answering it that way. So now we'll go ahead and open it up to our participants to ask us any questions. Um, our first question is, I'm gonna pull back up the concept, I'll just start with concept one, they are very similar. Uh, could the dedicated right turn lane on Vista heading south be integrated into the existing lanes on the street so there is one right turn lane, a straight lane and a left turn lane, like on Overland heading east. Adding a lane makes the intersection even longer to cross as a pedestrian. Sure, and I'll take that one, Amalia, thank you. Um, yes, uh, to your point, um, Alexandra, uh, it, it does make it a little bit longer for the pedestrians to cross. It, it adds about 12, uh, 12 feet for that lane width. Um, however, our, our analysis shows that we really do need a, a dedicated right turn lane uh, due to the volume of traffic that heads southbound to, to westbound. Uh, we did did counts, looked at the analysis there, and, and it, it shows that actually we really could use a longer, uh, a longer stacking area for the left turn lane. But however, we're, or excuse me, the right turn lane, um, but we're, we're right up against uh, some, some right of way constraints there with the, the northernmost property, uh, trying to limit those impacts and, and do the best we can uh, within the, the given footprint uh, that, that's out there already. Um, but uh, that's a great, great comment. And I also do want to add that um, when we come back and, and do this project, when we update all the ped ramps on all four corners, um, that will also include updating to um, the APS, so the um, push button for crossing at all of those intersections. So there will be additional pedestrian improvements at those intersection crossings as well. Thank you. Alexandra, I hope that answers your question. And if not, be sure and let us know. Um, as a reminder, if you're interested in asking a verbal question, you can just raise your hand and I will unmute you. Uh, or you can ask another written question. So does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Or even any more of our panelists, if you'd like to bring something up? Oh, Alexandra had a follow up here. Does that mean that the pedestrian crossing times are also increased to account for the additional lane? So I'll, I'll take that one too. Uh, yes, ACHD will, will review uh, what the crossing times need to be based on all the current standards uh, and, and the given width of the road to be able to, uh, to calculate the time that's needed for, for this, the pedestrian movements. Thank you, Tim. So I did place into the chat, which you're able to click on as participants of the meeting. You're welcome to uh, access the comment form that way to provide us any feedback. And Alexandra, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, and, or sorry, allow you to unmute yourself and you can proceed with your additional question. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the sidewalk uh, the new sidewalk from Vista to Overland and um, noticing how it's curved and then there's the kind of diagonal one that connects to the crosswalk and just wondering why that was choice was made instead of connecting the sidewalks directly to the corner there. It just seems like a little extra walking time once you cross the street if you're going straight. Sure, and, and I'll, I can maybe start and then Christy uh, or, or any of the other ACHD team members, if, you, if you'd like to chime in a little bit. Um, the main reason uh, for, for keeping it further away from the back of curb uh, and, and putting it along the actual, um, let's call it a driveway, was it, it increases the feel um, for bicycle and pedestrian safety. And ACHD has a, a new term that they're using for that. And forgive me, I, I can't quite recall it, but it has to, uh, to do with like a level, for lack of a better word, level of service uh, for pedestrians and bikes. It, it gives them a little bit safer feel yeah. uh, to, be, uh, to be separated from the traffic. Yeah, and Tim, I'll, I'll just jump in. Yeah, so we, we developed, um, it's called the level of traffic stress um, for bike and pedestrians, um, where we 
have an evaluation, we look at every arterial, well, every project, and um, how can we make that those facilities better, safer, and feel better and safer for pedestrians and cyclists. And if we have a detached um, sidewalk facility, it gets a higher level in that level of traffic stress, which is why we we chose to detach it where we could, um, especially at an intersection like this that gets the volume um, of traffic that it does. That's also with most um, arterial roadways, um, which Vista and Overland are both arterials. Um, and a lot of the projects at ACHD will be going towards looking at that level of traffic stress when we designed those projects, which is why I'm sure you may have seen in the news we're elevating bike facilities and getting them off of the roadway and providing some buffering between them um, and those lanes of traffic. And just just a little bit more there too, Christy, um, to, to add on, you know, neither one of these roads have dedicated bike lanes and, and the 10 foot sidewalk is intended to be a more of a multi use path for heads and bikes. And this will, again, help help the bicyclists feel feel a little bit um, more safe uh, on on these major arterial streets until ACHD can can further develop a, a multi use path along these corridors. Thank you, Kim and Christy. Alexandra, any follow up there? Um, yeah, thank you so much. That helps um, a lot. I I guess just following up on that, um, are there currently plans then to um, extend the landscape buffer um, in either direction? Or can any of that work be done with the intersection? You're on mute, Christy. Sorry. <laughs> as soon as I start to talk, it pops up and yells at me. Um, currently, we don't. Um, we have, we and we are currently developing. Um, bike ways that are adjacent to and and the purpose is we want to develop bike ways that take people off of these high stress locations and out of these areas and so we are going to come back and look at making some connections on overland and vista to get you to um like a main point here like if you're riding the bus and you get off and you're we got your bike and you want to try to get to one of those bike ways so we will come back to look at that specifically um, this project we looked at separately to try to increase it wasn't just to provide bike facilities but it was also to look at providing a safer intersection for all users of that intersection um, and again that's why we did the 10 foot so that if we do come back make those evaluations look at some other type of facilities that we can do to make those connections to the bigger network because we have like Shoshone there's the Nez Pierce bikeway. There's the, um, I think it's Columbus, if I'm remembering right. So we have several that are like quarter mile or so away from this intersection that we would like to connect to in the future. We just currently don't have those in. In the works anyway. Okay, does anybody else have a question they would like to ask either verbally or uh, in writing either way? Thanks, Alexandra. Does anyone else um, on any of our panelists, were there any questions from anyone else that participated from some of our city representatives? Doesn't look like we have any more questions from anybody. How would you like to proceed, Christy? Um, well, I would ask another question of those that are on the call with us, um, those that have the attendees, and we would love to hear for you since we hear from you since we've got you on the call now. Um, between concepts one and two, is there a, a preferred that you like between the two, one over the other, and maybe why you like that over the other one, or to, or the no build if you if your preference would be not to make any changes to the intersection. I we'd love to hear from you. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, while we're waiting for people to consider that question, um, I know that there were some issues with stormwater management at the site. Can you describe the improvements that will be made in regards to this? So I can take that one. Um, I believe ACHD does have some concerns uh, about the existing stormwater 
infrastructure out there. This is not something that we dove into really deeply um, during the concept phase. Uh, I, I know there's some concerns, uh, I think on the east leg, but on the north side by the Jimmy Johns uh, with some ponding water and and a lot of that will be looked at during the, the actual intersection improvement design for this project and, and will be incorporated into that design, how to, how to make those improvements a little bit better um, to, to help the drainage situation there and not have any ponding, uh, ponding issues going on. Thank you, Tim. So back to uh, Christy's question for, from our attendees. Uh, would definitely be interested in hearing from you your thoughts on concept one versus concept two and also the no build. I'm just trying to kind of scroll through those. As a reminder, concept one um, and two both show a dedicated, more traditional right turn right here in this location. The major difference between concept one and two is what's happening with these driveways here. So this darker section is really what we, the new pavement or where the new section of the road would be. And so on concept two, they would all come from the same location. And on concept one, there would be a separate driveway here. And then all of these folks here would come from this direction. Correct, Christy and Tim? I didn't do that wrong, did I? <laughs> you did great. Okay. <clears throat> Um, we have a comment from Alexandra. She likes concept two because the pedestrian route is more direct and has one less curb cut through the sidewalk. That's a really good point. Thank you very much. That's good feedback. Anyone else on the call like to share with us their feedback uh, regarding the two concepts? And if you're not big public speakers, you can always put it in the chat. <laughs> or you don't have to turn your camera on. Yep. Um, there's a question here, if there's any plans to make Vista two lanes. So just to clarify, is the question to reduce it to two traveling or one traveling in each direction? Is that what the question is? Maybe you could clarify that for us, Greg. Reduce. reduce. Yes. Currently, we don't have any plans to reduce that roadway. There's, there's a pretty significant traffic volumes on those roadways, and I'm not sure uh, that we currently have any plans to reduce that at all. No. Thank you. Anyone else interested in providing some feedback? And that's okay if you don't. As a reminder in the chat, I did place a link to our comment form. We uh, are very interested in hearing a bit more from you. If you'd like to, go ahead and click on that and submit your feedback that way. Uh, whatever is preferable to you. <clears throat> um, we did receive um, a comment that, con that this person likes concept one because the pedestrian experience of number two is weird. And I wonder if people would just walk through the driveway. Yeah, that's... That's certainly possible. I mean, we, you try and keep uh, the pedestrians on the sidewalk, but there's certainly not going to be anything there to prevent them from from walking through the turnaround area and, and shaving a few steps off if they're if they're going to walk um, along Overland to Vista or, or vice versa along the north side and, and the west side. Is the chat not working, Amelia? Because that was one of the comments. There we go. Now it should work. If the chat is working. I apologize for having that disabled. That was not my intention. I just didn't click the right button. <clears throat> Any other feedback anybody would like to share? I can follow up and let everybody know. So this is a concept study phase. Um, this is just evaluating what we can or 
can't do technically with this intersection. Um, once a concept is, a, is adopted by our commission, um, then it would go into our plan for future years to be actually designed, have engineer drawings completed. Um, likely there's no right of way that would need to be taken because that entire corner is actually ACHD right of way um, and then construction. So we're, it would be several years out before you would see anything actually occur at this intersection because it does take time to develop and actually put things into motion um, to get it completed. But the plan is the concept. And if we find something that, that the public and our commission like and want to move forward with, then that's the next steps would be getting this plan for actual construction in, in upcoming years. Thank you. So I've just put up on the screen a link to our comment form. You can also scan this QR code to access it. We'd like to receive your comments back by July 1st. And if you'd prefer to send in written comments, you're welcome to email, email those in or also send something via postal service to Christy's attention. I think we mentioned it earlier, but this entire presentation will be on ACHD's website. So if you miss any of this stuff or uh, your phone died and, and you can't take pictures of any of this, it'll, it'll all be up on the website uh, in the next few days. We do often see several people participate after the fact. Perhaps this time wasn't convenient for them, which is one of the reasons we do post the recording so that you may share with your neighbors or family if they're interested in seeing this to please visit the website to learn a bit more about the project and the concepts. <clears throat> any final questions for any of our attendees? Or any, or any additional follow up from our wonderful partner agencies or other ACHD staff we have on the call? We got a quiet group. <laughs> well, we definitely uh, part really appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, it's been a, a good meeting. And <clears throat> again, think about these concepts and what's important to you. And we really are interested in hearing more from you. Absolutely. We'll also, on, the, on our website that will have this information, it'll also have a phone number to call as well if you have questions for me too. You can call me directly. Oh, I could, yeah, well, maybe. Okay, Christy, uh, would you like to conclude the meeting or should we stay on until 6.30? What would be your preference? Um, I don't know, Christy Foltz, what, what are your thoughts on that? We didn't advertise it in time. Right, I noticed that on the website. So I think if we don't have any more questions and no more people popping on, we're good to conclude. Okay. All right, well, thank you everybody for your time this evening. We appreciate you joining us and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> Sean, Karen, everybody that's on. Thank you so much. Sean, good to see you. Bye, Tim. Hey.